You know the feeling, you finally whittled the boss's health bar all the way down, but instead of having the courtesy to die and let you have their sword or whatever, now they transform into an entire other form for a follow-up boss fight. This is BS game. That bar represents their remaining life, not remaining life until they get a dragon hand. These second phase fights are usually much harder. However, very occasionally, a boss will absolutely play themselves by transforming into a secondary form that is, surprisingly, way easier than whatever you just defeated. The idiots. These are the brutal bosses with weak source second forms. Bet they wish they'd gone out when they still had their dignity. Enjoy Amberware spoilers ahead for the following games. Ganon, the recurring baddie in Zelda, is not usually that frightening, and that's because he is, historically, a cartoon pig. There's only one cartoon pig I'm afraid of, and it ain't Ganon. It's Piglet. Calamity Ganon, however, the castle-consuming final boss of Breath of the Wild, is a different proposition, being neither a cartoon pig nor unscary. This nightmarish incarnation of evil is seriously hardcore, so much so that the main plot of this absolutely enormous game is lining up four huge battle mechs to point their death beams right down Ganon's maw, just so that when the final fight begins, you don't have to fight him with all of his health. Okay, so the quadruple death beam that took 80 hours to put together accounts for half of his health, and I'm just supposed to take care of the other 50%. I'm in trouble. Anyone who fights Calamity Ganon is in trouble because this enormous bearded death spider is wall-to-wall -wall bad news. Whether it's the fire sword he swings at a million miles per hour to swat you from the air, or the gun arm he has because, I mean, sure, let's give Ganon a gun arm. Why not? Or the fact that after a short while, he glows golden and becomes immune to almost every attack, including those made with the fabled Master Sword. <laughs> Calamity Ganon is a rightfully tough boss battle, considering that by this point in the game you're expected to have invested dozens of hours in maximising your health, stamina, and to have saved up all your most precious weapons and healing items for this savage showdown. So your heart will be in your mouth when you finally chip off Ganon's final bit of health and realise, oh no, this fight has a phase two. What the heck is going on, Zelda? He has given up on reincarnation and assumed his pure, enraged form. He wasn't already enraged? I'm in trouble again. Except, oh no, you're not actually. Because weirdly, considering how bonkers intimidating Calamity Ganon's first phase was, the phase two battle against the Dark Beast form is remarkably straightforward. All you have to do is shoot the golden weak spots on his big beastly flanks and Dark Beast Ganon will be dead in no time flat. His main attack in this form is a big forward firing laser, but it's slow and will almost certainly miss you. Also, it's remarkably easy to give him a wide berth in this phase. Although, of course, if you are hit by the swinging house-sized hooves of this rampaging horror, you will still be hurt to the tune of about, oh, half a heart. All in all, about a thousand times easier than phase one. Not very frightening for a creature of pure rage. You know why this is, don't you? It's because in this form, Ganon's back to being a cartoon pig. See, look at his tusks. Ah, wrong picture, wrong picture. Round one, fight. <laughs> Ogre from Tekken 3 is a large green paranormal martial artist who lives in a Mexican temple, and if you're annoyed at how little sense that makes, then friend, Tekken 3 is not the game for you. With his flowing red hair and imposing stature, Ogre is a fitting final boss for the game's arcade mode, which sees your player of choice confronting this so-called god of fighting in his temple lair. Probably over and over again because Ogre is, well, absolutely nails. 
Ogre canonically has the ability to absorb the abilities of martial arts masters he defeats, which goes some way to explaining why he'll kick your ass up and down town all afternoon without breaking a sweat. He hits extremely hard and will have your health bar halfway down before you can say, sorry, explain this guy's backstory to me one more time? Which, again, no. If we explain Ogre, we're going to have to explain Gon. It's a Pandora's box, people. Ogre is a famously brutal final boss, and the arcade version of Tekken 3 made publisher Namco approximately one megatrillion dollars in quarters as players tried in vain to best him. Anyone who did would discover that Tekken 3 has one final surprise up its very weird sleeves. Ogre, once bested, transforms into his bestial final form, which looks like if a gargoyle fell off Notre Dame into a passing vat of steroids. This version of Ogre is, however, an absolute breeze to fight compared with his previous incarnation. Yes, he's more massive now, but frankly, that just means there's more of him to hit. Not that he needs much hitting before he's beaten. Wow, that was easy. Have some of that Ogre. Take your final form back to hell, or wherever the heck you're from. Well, it says on the wiki he was created by aliens. I said it's a Pandora's box. The villain and final boss of Devil May Cry is Mundus, so-called because he is absolutely humundus. And at the conclusion to this intense hack and slasher, Mundus is also in space, in the form of an enormous angelic stone statue, but one that, unlike those you might see in your local cemetery, fires non-stop waves of lethal projectiles and lightning. This is the savage final battle against Mundus' stony first form, and boy is it a doozy. Should you manage to survive against his brutal attacks and deal enough damage to whittle down his health bar, Mundus will mix things up, smashing you down to earth for a punishing next stage, which is just as hard, but now with a lot more lava that you are guaranteed to fall into a lot. Here Mundus shows his strength as a final boss, filling the screen with devastating attacks that you'll be so focused on avoiding, you'll have barely any headspace left with which to platform up to him and chip away at his gigantic HP bar. It's pretty relentless, but with enough attempts and liberal use of power-up items, you'll see Mundus defeated. Your reward is to come back to Earth for an awkward scene with Dante's beloved Trish, who he believes at this point is dead. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! light, 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 light. You know what? Even if I was fine, I'd probably pretend to be dead in that moment. Mundus, however, is not as beaten as you might assume. As you make your escape, you'll be ambushed by a Mundus Transformed, his imperious stone facade having been blasted away to reveal his true form, a disgusting squashy eyeball monster who has no idea how apostrophes work. Come on Mundus, kids could be playing this game. Be responsible. Although at this point you're probably bracing yourself for the fight of your life, this new version of Mundus is surprisingly straightforward to beat, and I mean really straightforward. Much squashier and slower than before, besting Mundus' second form really just involves standing in front of his gloopy parts and wailing on him. You could watch out for counter-attacks if you like, but odds are you'll have his health bar in the toilet before he can do anything remotely alarming. Dante, use my power. Trish. After this, Trish shows up, oh good, she's alive, and gives you her power to deliver a satisfying one-hit kill on Mundus 2.0. Wow, that was a lot easier than fighting his first form, although there is still an awkward scene to watch afterwards. I... I... Trish, devils never cry. Ha, hang on, I thought they may cry. I'm confused. You want it? Well then come on over and get it! Ah! <laughs> Let's see if I can get their attention! Oh, hello! The fight against Oogie Boogie in Kingdom Hearts 1 is, for a Kingdom Hearts game, pretty damn cool. If you watch the Nightmare Before Christmas a bunch, you'll doubtless remember that this sinister sack of bugs, who is the creepiest character in the film, and that's saying something, absolutely loves to gamble. So it's a neat touch that Oogie's boss confrontation takes place atop a giant roulette wheel, presumably of his own sinister design. 
Oogie skulks around the outside of this deadly spinning wheel, hurling flaming dice at you and activating deadly traps that you'll need to be quick to avoid. The only way out is to hit the switches that surround the center of the wheel. These raise portions of the circle that, if you've timed it right, will get you up onto the same ledge as Oogie so you can belt out some combos. Until he decides he's had enough and pings you back into the wheel, of course, which seems grossly unfair. That's it, I'm emailing the Gambling Commission. Rather than dying with dignity, upon being beaten, Oogie will kick into an extremely odd phase too, whereby he undergoes a hideous transformation in which he melds horribly with his own manor house. Which is an extremely intimidating prospect until you realize that in this form, Oogie Boogie does not move or say or do anything at all. He just stands there inert while you hop around his twisted form, walloping the purple weak spots that keep him alive, all the while expecting something exciting or difficult to happen. But it never does. Pop all these darkness blisters and Oogie's not so scary second phase is beat. Wow, that was weirdly simple. Oogie Boogie does make a return as another boss in Kingdom Hearts 2, although this time, after the fight when Oogie's brain bug is revealed, Sora and the gang have the wisdom to confirm the kill. <sighs> wow, Donald didn't even blink. That was a murder. The Soul series is famous for many things. Chief among them are difficult bosses and final bosses where you beat the crap out of an elderly man. Both of these can be found in Demon's Souls, the medieval fantasy PlayStation 3 RPG that got a lush PS5 remake in 2020. The game involves traveling to different regions of the world and slaying huge and challenging bosses, and when enough have been slain, you can ride the lift up to the game's final and quite possibly most brutal challenge, Old King Alant. From his ironically angelic appearance to his arena at the top of the tallest tower in Boletaria, Old King Alant exudes final boss energy and has a move set to match. Alant can close distance with you in no time flat, forcing you constantly onto the back foot with flurries of hard hitting attacks, the definite worst of which is a grab attack that actually, hang on, are we reading this right, removes levels from your character. Cool! This horrifying power means that theoretically, if you struggle against Old King Alant for long enough, you're going to become less likely to beat him, not more, as he drains away the hard-won levels that you had to grind and butcher your way through the game to earn. If you overcome the inherent fear this provokes and bring Old King Alant finally to heal, it's revealed that this demonic reflection isn't even his true form. Then the voice of his true form beckons you to a meeting beneath the Nexus and to confront something called the Old One. Okay, that's a phase two boss form, if ever I saw one. Hilariously, however, it is not. This cruise liner-sized, tree-covered beast is just where the true form of King Alant lives. And if you wander inside it, you will find that true form, the real, actual, final boss of Demon Souls, King Alant, who is a slug now. In the farthest cry possible from the old King Alant you just sweated all your souls out to beat, this version of Alant only really has one attack, which is to flop slowly forward. It's not wise to completely relax at this stage. If you should be too busy gawping in confusion to get out of the way of that slow forward flop, King Alant can still deal moderate damage. But to be honest, the greater wound will certainly be to your pride. Despite being an extremely easy final boss, beating Alant in his true form actually takes quite a long time, presumably because his squishy malformed jelly dog body is quite good at absorbing sword blows. 
so you'll have plenty of time to reflect on how weird this whole situation is, and how you're about to finish Demon Souls with precious little grasp on what the hell is happening, or what happened for the last few dozen hours. Buddy, I've not understood anything. Dracula should be difficult to kill. It's kind of his whole deal. And Dracula as he appears in Castlevania for the NES is indeed pretty bloody hard to send back to hell. As the final boss of the game he has a huge amount of health and attacks in a way that will push your muscle memory and patience to the utmost limits. Dracula will teleport around the room making positioning yourself to fight him tricky indeed, and sometimes he'll spawn randomly right on top of you taking a bite out of your health reserves. The technique to beating him is to dodge his fireballs and whip him in his stupid vampire face in one smooth motion. But if you jump just a second too early, he's liable to nail you in the face with an upwards aimed fireball. And that's why he's known as, uh, the, um... Prince of Darkness? Nosferatu? Dracul? Ked. That's it. Make it through this phase and of course Dracula sheds his humanoid form, revealing his ugly monstrous true self, which in this case is a massive winged hell beast. It's our duty to inform you that phase 2 is even harder. Or it would be if Dracula weren't such a massive effing idiot. Because Dracula's second phase in this game has a particular weakness, holy water. This is one of the power-ups in the game and if you have holy water in this fight you can throw the blessed liquid repeatedly to damage the beast and stun him in place, giving a new meaning to the phrase spray and pray. And where might you find this most useful of final battle power-ups? Right in Dracula's bedroom is where! The leftmost candlestick in his chambers contains the magic Dracula killing juice that makes phase 2 a breeze, at least in comparison to phase 1. Maybe don't keep the thing that melts you in your own bedroom Dracula, you... Vampire? Bloodsucker? Revenant? Big head. Scientists reckon the odds of finding life on any given planet are infinitesimally slim. So you have to question the luck of bounty hunter Samus Aran, who seems to find not only life on every planet she visits, but oversized, murderous and claw-covered life. One such incredibly unlikely specimen that Samus encounters is found in the underground volcanic region of Norfair, a huge and basically terrifying red reptilian called Crocomire, whose skin appears to have at least partially melted off. I mean, if you don't want melted skin, maybe don't live in an underground volcanic region. Just saying. Crocomire is, as you'd expect, to look at it, a fairly nasty foe, and like most Metroid bosses, tests your ability to avoid a swinging set of claws while dunking projectiles into a seldom revealed weak spot. Not that easy when said weak spot is pouring out projectiles of its own. Pressure Crocomire for long enough and it'll be forced back onto a weakened bit of flooring, plunging it into lava that melts all its already half-melted skin away in dramatic fashion. <laughs> This isn't the end of the encounter, however. Crocomire has one more surprise up its bulbous sleeves when you try to leave. A second skeletal form that will surely be twice as difficult to- oh, oh, hang on. Oh, it died immediately. Wow. Guess Crocomire really wasn't suited to life in this lava cave. Which, again, on you, Crocomire. Just saying. Hey, thanks for watching this video about tough bosses that had a weak source second form. The second form of this video is you clicking through to one of these other videos, but the twist is that they are good, maybe even better than this one. Who knows? If you enjoyed this one, then maybe not. But if you hated this video, maybe you'll like these a lot more. So why not check out, this is one from um, Outside Xbox, that's the channel I, I can usually be found on. And down here's another one from this channel, Outside Extra. So check these two out, second form, go!